All right, if you're looking for the right return pump and you want cheap, you want uh, the most expensive, the best one out there, you want high flow rates, you want it to go up through the roof, you want all kinds of things quiet, we got you today. This is the return pump buyer's guide and all of these pumps here serve a purpose. There is a right tool for the right job. All right, as always, starting with the best seller, Ooh. the brand of pump that all of you guys pick up uh, and vote for as the most popular with your dollars. Four times as much is CJ. CJ, the Synchro Silence, the DCs, CJ, all the return pump options, those are picked up by you guys far times more than any other pump. In case you didn't hear that, four times <laughs> more than the next option. So CJ, being return pump, pump people. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Reciche is an Italian pump company. This isn't like an aquarium company that decided they wanted to sell pumps. Mm -hmm. Like this is a pump company. So not surprising that they come out on top. However, DC options, it's a little bit more murky. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of DC options out there. When you kind of piece them all together, which ones you guys are picking up, it's basically a tie across the board when it comes to DC pumps. Some are brand, some of you guys are picking up by brand deal you know, affiliation. Some of you guys are picking up by unique uses or purposes, but DCs across the way, it's about even. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to the bottom of that so you can understand a little bit of what each one does. But you know, when you're looking at the you know, Vectra, you're looking at uh, the DC option from CJ, you're looking at the Varios, you're looking at the Core. All of these actually really, really close to each other, not in a way that there's one big winner. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll get to the bottom of that today. However, there's a third category of bestsellers here that is worthy of popping out, which is that high-end DC. This is your Red Dragon. This is your Abyss. And I gotta tell you, I was surprised. Mm. The number one seller is actually the Red Dragon. Yeah. I thought it'd be Abyss for sure. But as voted by you guys, Red Dragon, the most popular high-end DC pump. All right, spoiler alert, before we get into all of this, some of you just like to know what Randy and I would use. Mm. And this is one of those rare instances where we actually agree. <laughs> yeah, um, we are, I'm, I'm in the Apex ecosphere, so I use the core. That'd be my first choice. I have two on my 60 gallon, put one on my mom's 120 at her place uh, because we have Apex. And that means I can look at her tank and her pump from here in Minnesota over there in Montana. Yeah, uh, there are a bunch of reasons you're gonna find out today why the core is so popular, especially if you own an Apex. Uh, can be used without with a 20. Uh, but if you don't, both of us actually also agree that CJ would be my <laughs> next runner up. So if I own for an sure. Apex, uh, it's the core. If I don't, CJ. All right, goals always for you to say, hey, that was for me. Uh, like they were speaking to me, they had the, my priority. And there's about seven of these priorities. Hopefully you'll raise your hand and say, ah, oh, that is me. I now know which one to get. Mm. There's one popular one here that always makes it, which is what is the cheapest option that gets the job done? Yeah, and so here we're looking at cheapest AC lifeguard. Uh, these ones, Quiet One Pros, uh, they're, they, they're not full of bells and whistles like all some of the DC options. It's a pump that works and moves water as makes it cheap. End of story. Uh, if you're looking for the cheapest option to work, uh, lifeguard is your guy. All right, the second option here, Probably the most popular one that comes right after that. You say, this is me. I want it quiet. It's in a living space, mm. which is everywhere in my home. Uh, yeah. Whether it be in uh, like a theater, whether it be in your living room, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, nobody wants to hear pump humming or yeah. that electrical noise. Yeah, so, you know, the winner here is anything DC. I think this conversation, when we're talking about quiet, if you choose a DC option these days, any of them, it will inherently be quiet. It's just the way it works now. I mean, the, they all have rubber feet. They all have solved this quiet conversation or this debate on how quiet is it or how loud is it. Uh, most DC options, almost all DC options these days solve that problem just out of the gate. They have just a way tighter tolerance. You don't have all the rattling, the humming, you don't have anything. In fact, a vast majority, I, I'd say all of the DC options, the Vectra, the Core, the uh, Varios, uh, the CJ option here, you wouldn't be able to hear them on, like if you stuck your head like underneath there <laughs> and cranked it to max, like maybe you could hear it, it was yeah. on. Uh, but as soon as you close the cabinet or try to you know, fight off the noise from your protein skimmer, you wouldn't hear it. So if silence your options, those things. I will say though, for high flow, mm -hmm. uh, both the Red Dragon and the Abyss, I have some pretty high flow versions of these at home. And even when I put my ear right on it, 
uh, even when it's cranked to max, I can't even hear it's on. Yeah. So uh, silent DC, of course, you get what you pay for on that end. And like, if it really needs to be that dead silent, like beyond what you didn't hear and you're using a meter, those are your options. All right, so the number third consideration, if you're not saying this is me, actually this should be number one, <laughs> uh, because is which one of these pumps is the most reliable? Mm. Now you might be thinking like, oh, I don't want it to break, so I have to buy a new pump and yeah. it's expensive. But no, that's not the answer. The answer is when that pump breaks and you don't know about it, you disconnect the life support of your tank to uh, the sump. And, uh, you know, the por portion of this thing is reliable. So I want to keep everything alive, man. Mm. If I lose the whole tank because of this pump, it's catastrophic. Yep. So which one of these is the most reliable option out there? And surprise, forget the brands. This is not one of those comparisons here because the most reliable option that we've come up with and we've ran is two pumps instead of one. So a dual pump system where if one of these fail, because they will inevitably fail, all of these will fail on a long enough time scale. But uh, if you have two, now I can keep that heartbeat and those, you know, the blood moving through my system and I'm not looking at a catastrophic dead failure. Yeah, so some of these that we'll get to are obviously more reliable than others, but I could take the least reliable pump up here and put it up to the next and won't touch the fact that if I use two just smaller dual pumps, that I'm not worried about the snails getting in it, a chunk of algae mm. getting in it, you know, the power supply uh, going, it got unplugged, it, uh, you know, all kinds of different yeah. things that can wear it out, calcium deposits on it. I don't have to worry about it. So if you get two return pumps off and go into their own little uh, return on the tank, uh, you know what? You don't have to worry about that because one will die and the other will keep going, you know, and usually keep the, uh, you know, tank limping mm -hmm. along. So uh, really think about that. And, and you know what? Some of these options out here are actually fit a little bit better because they're so small when you get two. But the next piece of reliability, it's the difference between this one and this one, and it's not brand, again, it's AC versus DC. And I, I can think of AC pumps that I had years and years and years, and I know people that had it random for a long time, and they just don't seem to die. There is a good chance that this CJ pump will outlast the tank that it's on. <laughs> uh, you know, especially if you maintain it, clean yeah. it. Uh, even when it stops, if you clean it, it'll probably start again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the AC motor, the tolerances on this are, you know, just not as refined, like meaning it will operate in a wider range yeah. and it just doesn't require that uh, same level of attention. So this is, you know, I don't even know, man, decades and decades and decades old technology inside of a DC pump or an AC pump. It works. Uh, the frustration here is definitely that reliability and quiet seems to be at a crossroads here because uh, AC pumps do make uh, that electrical mm -hmm. noise and some of them are quieter than others. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know what? AC, if your only goal is reliability, AC is the way to go. And there's another third one though here. Yeah, and that third one is warranty. Warranty absolutely matters because uh, some uh, have a longer warranty than others. You know, some trust their pumps more than others. So warranty, find one with a good long warranty, it's good to go. The reason that warranty matters isn't because I'm gonna use it, because I probably won't. Right. I can't think of many things yeah. that I've used warranty on other than this guy, which I'll tell you later. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, warranty, means that the manufacturer trusts it, yeah. right? So if you have a six month to 12 month warranty, it means that the manufacturer really isn't willing to bet on it any longer than that. <laughs> uh, so with the CJ pumps, you're looking at like three years out of the box. If you send in the little warranty card, in many cases, it's five years. Yeah. So the manufacturer of this pump believes that it's gonna last five years, and if it doesn't, they'll replace it or fix it. Uh, also, like with the Abyss, it's 10 years. Yeah. A That's decade huge. expect the manufacturer expects this pump to last. So, uh, yeah, you definitely paid for it. Uh, in the end, though, you know, it might actually be cheaper uh, than a bunch of other failed smaller ones along <laughs> yeah. the way. I, it's hard to say, but not manufacturers. Don't think of warranty in terms of that you're going to use it. In terms of if the manufacturer doesn't believe in it, why should you? All right, so number four, this is a little bit more unique, but if you need this, it matters. Yeah, so it matters is I want to go super high, probably through my floor and up to my display upstairs, meaning I got a fish room downstairs, 
there's a limited amount of pumps that can do that and do that well. So, you know, in that case, probably the, uh, the biggest, first, the biggest internal that you can find might be able to do that, but you gotta think of how high you're going. In most cases, maybe 16 feet, add more feet because of all the twists, turns and plumbing. Uh, and then that really shortens the amount of pool of available pumps that can do it. This one, uh, the externals are just known for doing that. Yeah, so again, a lot of these normal pumps, these are largely made for, you know, sitting underneath the tank mm -hmm. or on the other side of a wall. If I need to get from the floor uh, where it's on a sumps on the floor, all the way through the ceiling up into the top of the tank, again, you're looking at 16 feet, maybe the sumps elevated and it's only 14 mm -hmm. feet, but also elbows and everything. <laughs> so even when you look at the head pressure chart at 14 feet, really you should be probably looking at closer to 20, mm. 22 feet of, of head pressure once you like really think about all the twists and turns in your plumbing. Yeah. So uh, the best options usually uh, reflow here. Big uh, I will tell you that I'm gonna get in a warranty piece on this one just cause while we're here, I used the dart at one point in time. Mm -hmm. And if you watch the frag plug thing, I told you that I made my own frag plugs out of cement <laughs> and uh, caked all of my plumbing it caked the inside of my reflow pump and it's seized up with all the Ooh. cement in it as well. So don't make your own plugs. It was, <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, I sent it back to them and, uh, they warrantied it. And this is like, uh, I'm just a reefer at this point, many, yeah. many years ago. And they just sent me a new one. Actually, I met him at a show leader late years later. And I told him that story. He's like, that was you. Uh, like, I couldn't <laughs> believe that we actually sent that back. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh warranty matters that like, people that stand behind it, but reflow pumps, uh, oh. These are pressure rated pumps yep. that will go through the ceiling. Uh, if you're looking for a DC pump, I gotta tell you, a lot of these don't handle head pressure at 20 mm -hmm. feet very, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, sadly, the abyss being the, the anomaly in that case. Uh, but uh, you know what? Also, some, there's some head pressure pumps out there from uh, Awaki and Panworld yep. and the likes of those as well. But reflow, probably your number one option. All right, here's another anomaly here. What if getting the exact number of gallons per hour right is a priority? Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of applications you can think of this, but the easiest way to get it done, the best tool for this job is something that's adjustable, DC pumps. DC pumps, I, can, I have like the cores that can step like 15 to 16 different flow rate steps. And then there's some of that like four or five. But the point is, is I'm able to adjust it with a uh, button press and the speed of the pump rather than tweaking a little uh, plumbing fitting that may get caked over time. And then it changes the flow rate. I can just get a steady flow rate out of the box by pushing a button. All right, so there's two very distinct reasons for this. Mm. One, UV. UV works, this thing says do it at 364 gallons an hour, you should be close. <laughs> you right? close you have to get the, the exact four right, but you should be close. Uh, and DC is what's going to allow you to do that mm -hmm. the best. You, you could valve off an AC pump, I suppose, but DC is what makes it easier to adjust uh, up and down. Uh, if you have an apex, they sell a flow meter, which actually what I use at home oh, to yeah. make sure this is on. And it actually works really well and it's stable and it's really easy to adjust as you know, things get clogged mm -hmm. or whatever over time. Uh, but the one piece of this that's uh, like, I think applies to everyone is you have your like a uh, bean animal, your Herbie style overflow exactly. and you're like, constantly messing with this valve sucking and all air, whatever. Sucking air, not sucking air, yeah. Yeah, and like trying to get the right height and like the amount of water that goes through this valve, it's usually in an inconvenient place. Or I can just go up to the, you know, the control panel on the core and go up one step or down one step and it compensates mm. uh, and uh, I don't have any of that noise. It's awesome. It's just way easier to use the controller <laughs> on a DC pump than it is to mess around with those valves. And for that reason, uh, you know, like the core here has a, like a lot more steps, mm -hmm. like you said, like yeah. the Varios here has, you know, five steps, which at first glance for me is what I wanted. Yeah. Like, I don't want to need all the steps mm. until I started using all of them. And I understood, you know what, the more steps, the easier I can tune it to my overflow. All right. The next one is a really interesting conundrum. <laughs> I'm ready to spend big bucks in the pump. It's the lifeblood of my tank. I just want to know I got this return pump thing behind me uh, and it's going to be expensive. Is it Red Dragon or is it uh, the Abyss? I mean, I've 
I haven't I only messed with your red dragons before, uh, but I have plumbed in on the the 160 or the Abyss like this and on the 750XXL we plumbed in the, the Abyss and there's a couple differences here that really stand out to me personally and that is uh, first thing is the unions on the top and unions on the front. Uh, Having those in, uh, included makes my plumbing a whole lot easier to get in. Uh, the Abyss has a, a collar that you put over the top of it, and then you put a plumbing fitting in, but then it's it's basically permanent. You know, By the time you get it glued in and it's under pressure, so you have to glue it. Uh, here, I can remove this, get another union if I want to swap it out or swap out plumbing. That's probably, for me, one of the biggest factors. And then other than that, it's the uh, size of the control box. Yeah, uh, I will say I agree with that. I wish they actually, maybe they do, I should bring it in, it is uh, just sell the front of this thing mm -hmm. uh, so that you, if you ever need to swap all your plumbing, I can do that, it's yeah. a lot easier. Uh, all right, so uh, this isn't gonna be, uh, we try to make satisfactory answers here, this one isn't gonna be, so get ready. Uh, you know what, there's just not like as big of a user base because of the expense of these things. And there's like a lot of purchase defense, to be honest. Yeah. Because you spent so much money on it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so between the two, I'll just give you my own experience. Uh, I have both of them running at home. We've used both uh, here mm -hmm. on uh, the e or the BRS 160 as well as the 750. And I will tell you this, uh, they're both dead silent. They're both super easy to adjust. Uh, this one goes in like, you know, increments of like two. I mean, you could set it up probably 30, mm. 40. Uh, the same thing with this one. You got really, really wide range and tiny, fine increments of change with both of them. Uh, I will tell you, there is a conundrum here that I have, which is uh, the Red Dragon. I haven't ever had one fail me. And I did have one of these fail me ones. Mm. It is an uh, anecdotal experience. Uh, because the flip side of that is there's no question like, you know, like finish quality of the control box and cords and the actual pump itself. If you touched and felt one, you would say hands down, no <laughs> questions asked. The Abyss is the one to go with. Uh, you know, the fit and finish of the Red Dragon just isn't the same uh, as the Abyss. So. This is the answer I'm gonna give you, and it's gonna to be totally unsatisfactory, but right. both of these guys are constantly out of stock. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, and many times out of stock for months. So yeah. I would probably pick whichever one was in stock. This is another important one that will definitely speak to some people. What if it needs? to be small. Super tiny. Yeah. yeah. What options are the best thing? Yeah, and uh, you go look, this is an Eheim Compact. Uh, that is, extremely small. So where's the, the smaller CJ pumps and stuff too, but when it comes to the smallest by size, the Eheim Compacts are the one. I think it's called the Compaction. Compaction. Now, Compaction, Compaction now. Uh, yeah, I mean, they are very, very close, close, but no question, the Eheim is just a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. So if space really counts, like you're in an all-in-one, yeah. you're trying to pack two into a small area, this is it. But DC. this is the DC. This is the new, new unique guy right here. The two uh, of the, the Varios. Varios. Oh man. Yeah, I mean, he, if you want to get two return pumps into a smaller sump uh, and uh, you know have redundancy and quiet, because you want double the noise in many cases, uh, this is it. Uh, <laughs> this one is the smallest option out there. Uh, it also, you know, you know, it comes with this little like guard. It's one of the mm -hmm. only, like the few out there. CJ's uh, DC option comes with this guard. Uh, there's guards actually built into the like, mm -hmm. AC versions of these things. Uh, I think that Vert or Vectra actually has an aftermarket one you yep. can put on here, but it's nice that this little guard comes with it. And you know, while we're talking about it, actually, another kind of cool feature of uh, the DC pump here on this one is that it comes with a float switch that oh, uh, prevents like it that. from drying out. Mm -hmm. you know, so if the water level, your auto top off failed or anything like that, yes, the uh, Varios here, will water will go down, it'll trigger the float switch and it'll turn it off so you don't burn out the pump. So that actually rolls us right into those tips and things that start to differentiate some of these things, <laughs> okay. uh, tips that really matter uh, when we're selecting and how we use them, which is now you're gonna see one of the benefits of DC pumps and smart ones, which is a lot of these pumps will actually just turn themselves off when they recognize that uh, there is uh, no water in the return pump area, which to be honest, mm. you might be thinking, why would that happen? 
the number one cause is because your auto top off actually stopped yep. uh, working or the auto top off bin got empty. Happens all the time. Uh, which will definitely happen <laughs> to you at some point in time. So what will happen to your pump? Will it just spin and burn out or uh, will it turn off? And the answer is uh, the Vectra here and uh, the core and uh, the CTA all work a little bit differently. but when the water level gets too low and it detects that it doesn't have any water, it will just stop spinning mm. and save your pump from burning out. Yeah, and the Varios does it in the different way that you hit on just a second ago, is uh, it does the same thing, but uses the mechanical float switch. So you could just be intelligent about where you place it, but the ability for these things to recognize that, hey, I'm getting low and I'm, I, you've probably spent a bunch of money on these things and now I'm gonna protect myself, it's just, a, you know, some self-assurance that these things will take care of you when you're not around. Yeah, I will say there is one unique one uh, up here, which is actually the CJ will uh, uh, email you in like with temperature and stuff mm -hmm. uh, inside the pump and, and failure. So it actually has like a Wi-Fi function to it, which is cool. But really the, the king of that type of feature is of course the if you have an apex and you've hooked up the core to it not only will it stop working but it will tell you that it stopped <laughs> working and the reason why uh, yeah. with an error code so uh better than just not destroying itself is telling you come save me come turn me on uh, fix right. me this is how you know a three-year tank makes 10 is because i have instant notification of the actual problem so Again, DC acting smart and being able to just turn off in various different ways. Some of them like, uh, I don't know, like the, the float switch here, I actually have to make sure that that's running, operating clean and nice. Yep. I actually prefer the options to just do it on their own. All right, so there's another one here and this one might actually surprise you. Yeah, so when your biggest question that we get asked a lot and a lot of people ask is how much flow do I need? What size of pump do I need? And how do I make sure I get the right one for me? Uh, and when it comes down to gallons per hour, how many gallons per hour I need? First thing to do is just assume that half of the flow that you're looking at uh, is going to be there after all the twists, bends and uh, standard install. Um, you're going to see about half when you're looking at the chart. Yeah, so if you're looking at your like head pressure chart and it says like, oh, this pump is gonna do 600 gallons an hour at six feet, uh, uh, well, you know what? Uh, after you go through a bunch of 90s and that little porthole and your lock line and all that other yeah. stuff, uh, it might do a little bit better than this, but in many cases, it's just best to assume that half of it's gone. So not 600 uh, gallons an hour at that height, but probably closer to 300 mm -hmm. will be a more accurate guess uh, and you might not want to hear that, but it's probably true. All right, so the flip side of that is, we're gonna probably tell you that you don't need as much turnover as you thought. Yeah, very surprising and eye-opening to me in, you know, during the WWC BRS hybrid series, and that is you don't need the 10 times turnover that you might have read about. So 100 gallon tank, do I need a 1,000 gallon per hour pump after all the twists and turns and bends? Yeah, it's more like three, and you could be on either end of that, but three times turnover, enough to heat the water and filter the water. It's about all you need. I can't wait until we can just stop saying that people used to say 10 you know, times <laughs> turnover and then it just becomes an- Freeze the like, standard. Yeah, yeah, like there's new standard here that uh, is out. Because really that comes from like a decade plus ago when we were using flow as uh, like the flow through the sump as part of the flow yeah. in the tank and nobody does that anymore. Or very, very few people uh, use uh, the like return pump as a primary source of flow mm -hmm. and a reef tank anyways. Uh, and so now like three times, meaning I'm just trying to heat the water and I'm just trying to filter mm -hmm. the water, which means if it goes three times, nearly all of the water goes through my filtration and area to heat it every 20 minutes. Yeah. So it's plenty. that is many, many, many times a day, <laughs> you know, like nearly 75 times a day that the filtration and heaters get a chance to heat mm. the water and filter. And it's probably all that you need. And this is actually, uh, it should be good news because that means I don't have to spend as much money on pumps mm -hmm. and I can get two even smaller, more cost-effective pumps to run redundant ones. Yeah, well, and you know what? A thousand, like you had a hundred gallon tank, a thousand gallon an hour return pump is A, gonna, if you had an AC pump, gonna make some noise. Yeah. But all that water actually rushing through the makes whole noise. system makes a lot of noise. Oh, yeah. So if you can do one third of that, it's gonna be cheaper, it's gonna be quieter, and it's probably going to be just as effective. And when I say just as effective, there might be some 
tiny incremental <laughs> benefit to doing every 10 minutes instead of every 20, but probably not one that the tank would notice or that you would materialize is actually better. So uh, I say that, and you probably won't actually even nail down three perfectly. So if you got four or two, actually you're probably good again this is a recirculating system getting even at only two times turnover you know it's getting nearly 50 times the chances mm -hmm. to you know filter out all the water through your skimmer through your uv through your uh you know filter pads or socks or roller mat all of these things that are in your tank and it probably isn't a concern in fact when we looked at the wwc tanks mm. I think some of those, in all honesty, were like maybe one time, yeah. so, you know, one and a half after you really look at it, yeah. uh, because they're big. Those are giant, giant tanks. Like, what if I wanted 10 times turnover on a 90 uh, or 900 gallon tank? Ooh. What am I gonna do, 9,000 gallon an hour <laughs> pump on there? No, they actually Not had even. like a dart on it, which yeah. is, and with a lot of head pressure that was feeding a bunch of other things. So yeah, even the pros, much closer to that three. This debate's kind of dried up, but external versus internal yep. in a standard case, like underneath your tank or on the other, other end of the wall. Only when you have to go external. So, I mean, this thing is big, it puts off some heat and it can be pretty loud also. So only when you need to use external for its very specific job is when you should use one. It's just adding more plumbing fittings. Mm. It's adding like, if I have to maintenance it, I'm gonna have to like cork off this hole. So if I could just put it in the return pump changer with my sump, like I would always use a, a, a internal pump. A, a, using externals kind of came from a world where there, you get a little bit of heat transfer from uh, submerging the motor in there, but yeah. the, the pump's only 50 watts to begin with. So even if it was 100% inefficient, it's like adding a 50 watt heater to your tank. It, <laughs> it isn't 100% inefficient. So, uh, you know, it, the heat isn't really that big of an issue. It's like leaks and reliability and all that stuff. And I, and I find that submerging uh, the pump just works a lot better. I would only use an external if I absolutely had to because the size of the pump required it. That said, if you're gonna use an external pump because you have to, I'll be straight up. The ones that are designed for it are way better than the ones that could be both. Yeah, and the, um, there's people that use you know, all of these pumps or, or the vast majority of these pumps on the table in that internal and external both situations. Uh, I just trust something that's made for that purpose. Yeah, so I mean, an external pump is designed to never ever leak at all costs. Its primary core function <laughs> is that. Uh, and so like uh, with a big pump like this, uh, that's designed for that purpose, I just trust it a lot more than some of the plastic connections on an internal pump. It's kind of designed that it could be both. Uh, for me, leaks over the long term are a concern, and so I would absolutely use uh, one of these. I will note, though, that even some of these uh, uh, external pumps, uh, like uh, the Reflow series, does occasionally wear out a seal, mm. and then it'll start a small leak. So, you know, recognizing that up front and just doing some periodic maintenance, like popping out the seal and replacing it, will make sure that that never happens. All right, the next consideration here is actually some of these things do this way better than others, but a notification that it failed, and there's more than one out here that does it. It's extremely important about these notifications because I, I could be anywhere. I could be sleeping, I could be at work, I could be halfway across the world. How do I know when my pump fails until I get home to find, you know, catastrophic failure everywhere? So in notifications matters, and not right when you're next to the pump with a Bluetooth type connection, but when I'm away so I can call somebody or drop work and head home. Sleeping, I'm on vacation, whatever. Uh, I get a notification, says uh, my pump needs fixing, I can either go there or I can call up a good friend and say, hey, Randy, uh, kick down my front door and save my tank. Uh, break the window if you have to, but to get in there and save the tank, because I wouldn't know if yep. something didn't tell me yep. that this broke. So obviously Apex Ready again, it will tell you that. And the people think of controllers as like this uh, thing that's gonna save the tank, mm -hmm. turn on and off. But really 90% of it is it just told me that the pump is broken so I can call Randy, I can call myself, I call my wife, say go fix this thing. Ah. But what if you don't have a controller or a monitor 
There's sure. another option. There's other options out there, like the C chain. So it's, it's got Wi-Fi into it. And it's got an <laughs> app, and it just talks to you, it talks to your Wi-Fi at home, and it'll tell you some of those things. Yeah, this is one of the cool things: is if you download their app, uh, the pump, and uh, hook it up to Wi-Fi. Uh, the pump will actually tell you a bunch of things when it's not working, and some of them are very specific reasons as to why it's not working, and send those push notifications to your phone. So even if you don't have a controller, uh, it actually monitors the temperature of the surrounding water as well as uh, uh, the pump's, uh, tumps, uh, pump's temperature. And one of the cool, like, oddball things that it does is it will actually send you alarms about the temperature of your tank in case your <laughs> heater failed. Like a weird feature inside of this, but really cool one because a lot of people don't have those monitors. So if I can monitor both the temperature of my tank, so heater failed, air conditioner in my house failed, uh, furnace failed, all these other things could have failed, uh, as well as the return pump. Smart. Man, you have removed a whole bunch of uh, problems from the tank and you got instant notifications when they happen. There's one tip in here that uh, I will never do, but you should do. <laughs> yeah, that is register your pump for warranty. You know, specifically the CJ, you want to gain a couple extra years of warranty, go online and register the thing so you can do it. It's not that you need it, but it's there in case you do. But the trust is there too. Most of them will give you three years out of the box without warrant registering it, but you get five if you register it in most cases. Well, why not? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not a warranty registration person. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever done that in my entire life, but you know what? It takes three seconds and you can get an extra couple of years out of it. And again, we said that like a lot of these pumps will actually outlast uh, the tank that they're even <laughs> on. Uh, and that's part of it, because if it just breaks, they'll send you a new one or fix it. So uh, yeah, that is absolutely one of the benefits. Uh, go ahead at the CJ pumps and fill out the card. All right, so if you want to see what everybody else thinks about these pumps, not just us, you can check out the reviews and see them all here on the Bulk Reef site. But uh, you probably saw what we said, which is you now understand why the CJ brand of pumps, the pump company that makes pumps, 4X, all yeah, of the other huge. ones. Uh, and why Randy and I say Apex, uh, if you are the core, if you have an Apex, CJ, if you don't. But really, uh, all of these DC pumps, you know, being the Vectra, being uh, the core, being the Varios, and even the CJ1, all of these guys, super, super quiet. Yes. And the future of reefing.